English is a unique language in so many ways. It has quirky spellings, unpredictable pronunciation, and some really weird sentences, which are the subject of this video. Here is a sentence that repeats the same word seven times in a row and still makes sense. Well, sort of. It is true for all that, 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 that refers to is not the same that, 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 that refers to. This sentence completely blew my mind the first time I heard it. Seven that's in a row, followed by another four. I couldn't make head or tail of it. I thought that perhaps if I substituted a couple of that's with witches and added a bit of punctuation, it might help. It is true for all that, that 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 which that that refers to is not that that which that that refers to. Still not making sense? Let's rewrite the sentence with other words to help explain the meaning. It is true despite everything you say that this word which this word refers to is not the same word which this word refers to. Still confusing. But perhaps it makes a little more sense now. Suffice to say that in terms of grammar, it's a valid sentence. Confusing, but valid nonetheless. There are seven ways to spell the sound E in English. The following sentence contains all of them. She was relieved that Caesar could see people having caffeine from teapots. It's a strange sentence, but a useful one, because it's a ready reckoner for all the seven spellings of the E sound in English. The next sentence is based on an old joke about bad punctuation. Eats, shoots and leaves. This sentence was written about pandas, the large black and white mammals native to China that eat the shoots and leaves of bamboo trees. If you throw in some unnecessary commas though, it starts seeming like a reference to a person or a panda who eats his meal, fires a gun and goes away like a cowboy. Eats, shoots and leaves. The Zero Tolerance Approach to Punctuation is the title of a book by Lynn Truss on punctuation that is, believe it or not, entertaining. Read the following sentence and see if it makes sense to you. Not making sense? Well, it does if you keep in mind that R-E-A-D is pronounced read in the present tense and read in the past tense. Similarly, L-E-A-D is lead and lent. So here's how you should read the sentence. Read rhymes with lead and read rhymes with lead. But read and lead don't rhyme and neither do read and lead. This reminds me of a riddle I learned as a child. What's black and white and red all over? The riddle is designed to make you think of an object with three colors, black, white and red, and thus get the answer wrong. But the question that was asked was actually not this, but this. And the correct answer is a newspaper. This riddle was devised in the days when newspapers were printed only in black and white. Nowadays, of course, they come in every color of the rainbow, making this riddle defunct. The next sentence is unique because it contains the 10 different pronunciations of the letter sequence O-U-G-H. The rough-coated, dough-faced plowman was so deep in thought as he walked through the streets of Scarborough that he fell into the slough by the loch, coughing and hiccuping. Scarborough is the name of a place and slew means swamp in this context. The word can also be pronounced slough, slough or slough. Loch means lake and H-I-C-C-O-U-G-H is an alternate spelling of hiccup. There you have it, five or maybe six English sentences with rather unique characteristics. I'm the English Nut and it's bye for now. Like this content? Do subscribe. Like, comment, share, tag your friends. From one English nut to another, thank you.